Here, we break down this drawing and explain the math underlying this from Fourier series to epicycle drawings. Although you think this animation is chaotic at the drawing tip, this is fully mathematically described. Each of these little arrows you see is a vector, vector with a certain magnitude and initial angle and is rotating at a specific frequency. Each of these vectors are joined tip to tail and at the very end the path drawn by the tip of the last vector is drawn to the screen. This result in this beautiful animation is termed as epicycle drawings with Fourier series. Any closed path you may consider, you can draw it using this technique provided you have enough vectors to work with. The idea of Fourier series was introduced by Joseph Fourier in 1807. What is a Fourier series? The idea of representing any periodic function in terms of sine and cosine terms is referred to as the Fourier series of that particular function. Suppose you are asked to model this square wave mathematically. When we look at it, of course it is a periodic function. As this function is periodic, we may consider the other periodic functions like sine and cosine to model this square wave. Trying different frequencies of sine waves, we could get an approximation to the function. But it is not at all a good approximation. Adding certain sine functions with certain frequencies and amplitude, we get a closer approximation of square wave. The key focus on getting this Fourier series is to find the amplitude and frequencies of these sine terms that add up for getting closer approximations. The general formula for finding the Fourier series of a periodic function is as follows. Consider a periodic function defined on the interval alpha to alpha plus 2l, where the period of the function is 2l. The general representation of this Fourier series for that periodic function will be f of x given by this formula. Here, a0 is a constant term defined as 1 by l integral alpha to alpha plus 2l f of x dx. A n and B n are the amplitude of cosine and sine functions in the series. For those who are more curious on what are constants for this square wave you just saw, here are them. Adding each term in the series, we get more closer in approximating the function. The focus of this video is not just approximating a periodic function, instead we will bring the idea how the approximations help us to draw any closed path with rotating vectors. But how do these rotating vectors come to play? Consider this vector with magnitude 1 and rotating at a constant frequency. We find that the x coordinate is actually a cosine function, specifically cosine of some parameter t. Similarly, the y-coordinate is actually a sine function of that parameter t. We call this type of functions as parametric functions. The x-coordinate is described with the third variable t and y-coordinate is described with the same third variable t. Adding another term of cosine and sine functions with x and y coordinates results in adding a new vector. Here a vector with magnitude 1 rotating 2 cycles per second is shown. The magnitude of the vector is determined by the coefficient of cosine or sine function for each term and their frequency is determined by the input to the corresponding cosine or sine function. The initial angle of these vectors is given as the phase difference in the corresponding cosine or sine function. The key takeaway is that each term of cosine or sine functions corresponds to each unique rotating vector. Take the previous example of the square wave. 
let us limit our view to the first three terms. Each of these terms corresponds to each rotating vector with these magnitude and frequencies. Though to draw these as rotating vectors, we should be able to represent this function as a parametric function. The y coordinate will be the function which was the Fourier series for the square wave we saw before, and x coordinate is the cosine variant of this. If you represent these rotating vectors, we get our square wave output as the y coordinate of the final rotating vector. As the number of terms increases accordingly, the number of vectors increases, we approach a good approximation of this square wave. Here, we focus on the drawing of the final vector rather than the y coordinate alone. The animation you saw at the beginning makes sense now. The drawing of any such closed path with a final vector like this one could be broken down to two functions just for x and y coordinates. Each pair of terms from these corresponds to each of rotating vectors. Expressing these rotating vectors in parametric form becomes more complicated when we move on. The solution is that we should increase our view onto complex numbers. Let us consider the y-axis to be the imaginary axis, denoting an imaginary part of the complex number, and x denote the real part of the complex number x plus i y. The famous Euler's identity e to the i t equals cos t plus i sin t build up a link to this parametric form of function. Like in a parametric function, drawing a circle with cos t as x coordinate and sin t as y coordinate, here the function f of t, that is e to the i t gives out a complex number as defined as cos t plus i sin t and when we plot these complex numbers into the complex plane, we get these rotating vectors drawing out a circle in the complex plane. If we add a new vector, it corresponds to adding a new term in this complex function f of t. Going back to the parametric form of expressing vectors, the goal here is that we should be able to draw any closed path in a plane with two functions, each for x and y coordinate. If we could get the Fourier series for x coordinate and y coordinate functions, we get those functions in terms of sine and cosine function, which is conveniently converted to its complex exponential terms and would be represented as a complex function. For the full drawing with rotating vectors, we define the function f of t that produces a complex number as output. f of t will be the sum of these exponent functions each term corresponding to each rotating vector. The coefficient of the exponent function fixes the magnitude of the vector, and the initial angle is determined by the argument of the coefficient, which is also a complex number. The epicycle drawings can be mathematically described to the sum of weighted exponential function terms. Here, we are given the rotating vector with some particular frequency say vector with one rotation per second in counterclockwise direction, another vector with one rotation per second in clockwise direction denoted by the negative sign, zero rotation per second denoting a constant function and so on. The amount of rotation for a vector with one rotation per second is given by 2 pi as t goes from 0 to 1, the vector should complete a full rotation covering a distance of 2 pi. For the vector with 2 rotation per second, the distance covered will be 2 times 2 pi as t goes from 0 to 1. Here we draw the full drawing as t goes from 0 to 1. So here we have the rotating vectors with the general formula e to the n times 2 pi i t. To alter the magnitude of each vector, each term is multiplied by a complex number relating to the magnitude and the initial angle of the vector. Our goal is to find this constants for each term that will approximate the function which draws a closed path. Each constant is given by the general formula integral 0 to 1 f of t e to the negative n times 2 pi i t.
all the chaotic nature of these vectors are fully captured in this formula the integral computed for this animation uses the technique of discrete sampling and integrating numerically in theory the function f of x should be computed for infinite number of terms to get the exact drawing but for this animation we compute only limited number of terms this gives the idea that the constant vector that we referred before is not necessary to include also we could switch the order of vectors analog to switching the order of terms in function f of t increasing the number of vectors results in more closer approximation for the required drawing